Hi guys. So I need to start this video off with a disclaimer. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out these quiz review questions in the way that makes the most sense to me. That is not the only way to work out these questions. Now you should still get the same answer, but if you go about it a different way, that's okay. Um, some of these, there are a lot of different ways that you could do them. The other thing I want to make sure I make a note about is just watching this video is probably not going to be enough to get you ready for this quiz because you need to understand when you look at this problem what makes the most sense to you and how are you going to try to solve it um, you can use the key to check your answer but the best thing if you get stuck is just to ask me for help um, it may be a good idea to work this review more than once even just so you can see the different strategies and styles of problems that you have here all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this first one. Um, again, what we've talked about, a really common strategy is to rewrite things in terms of sines and cosines. So cotangent is the same thing as cosine divided by sine. Well, sine is already in terms of sine, so I don't have to change that. And then those sines are top bottom, so they'll cancel out and I'm left with cosine. On this next one, I'm gonna use the same strategy. I'm gonna rewrite this as cotan x divided by cosecant x. And I'm gonna rewrite both of these in terms of sine and cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine, and cosecant is one over sine. When we divide fractions, we keep change flip. My sines will cancel out, and I'm left with cosine. All right, let's try our next one. if my slide will change. There we go. All right, so on this one, um, I'm gonna foil this out, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite this. I've got cosine cosecant times cosecant is cosecant squared. Cosecant times one is just cosecant minus cosecant minus one. Well, plus cosecant and minus cosecant are gonna cancel out. That leaves you with cosecant squared minus one. So if you check back at your Pythagorean identities. So you won't see this one exactly, but you'll see kind of one of these that you can rewrite. So the one that's on your chart is this. Okay, so I can either rearrange it or I could replace cosecant squared with co cotangent x plus one, whichever way makes more sense to you. We've been rewriting them. So this is cosecant squared minus one if you subtract one from both sides of the equation. So cosecant squared minus one is cotangent squared. All right, the next one's gonna be a similar process, but instead of foiling, we're just gonna distribute. So secant times secant is secant squared. Again, think about it like x times x minus y. That's gonna be x squared minus xy, except instead of x and y, it's secant and cosecant. Then we're gonna have minus secant times cosine. Well, secant squared, that's in one of our Pythagorean identities, so I'm going to leave that alone for now. And then I'm going to rewrite secant cosine. Now, you may recognize secant and cosine are reciprocals, and if we multiply something by its reciprocal, we just get one. If you don't recognize that, you can replace secant with one over cosine, and you still end up with one. Now don't lose that one, it's still part of your answer. Your answer here is not secant squared, it's secant squared minus one. That's one of your Pythagorean identities, which is tangent squared. The other thing you could do if you didn't rearrange that identity, you could replace this with one plus tangent squared, you'll still get to the same answer. All right, on my next one. Um, again, there's two ways to work this out. What I'm gonna do is I see a common factor. So I'm gonna factor out that common factor. So this is similar to something like this. If you have an X, you can factor it out and you'd be left with one minus Y, okay? Or a little bit simpler. Something like this, you can factor out the four and you're left with X minus two. That's the same process that I'm doing here. Again, you don't have to do it this way, um, but that's what I'm gonna do. Then one minus cosine squared is sine squared. And anything times it's reciprocal is one. Cosecant and sine are reciprocals. Even though they're squared, that's okay. It's still one times one. 
All right, on six, we're going to have to add these fractions with a common denominator. That common denominator is going to be sine cosine. So the right fraction is missing a cosine. So that's going to be 1 minus cosine squared. And let me not combine them together quite yet to keep it a little bit easier for you. There we go. Sorry. Skipping ahead a step for you. Okay, now they have the same denominator, so I can combine them together. And then 1 minus cosine squared is a Pythagorean identity. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. So remember, sine squared is sine times sine. Okay, so if you want to rewrite th that step, you can. Otherwise, you can realize when we cancel out here, sine cancels out one of the sines. So I'm left with sine over cosine. Okay, again, that previous step, it's kind of like if you have this. If you have that, one of the x's cancels, and you're left with x over y. Okay, that's what we did in that last step. All right, and then sine over cosine is quotient identities, tangent. All right, this is another one where I'm going to go ahead and do a common denominator. So in order to add these fractions together, I need the same denominator. I need a sine on the left fraction. I need a cosine on the right fraction. So on the left, I'm going to have sine times cosecant, which I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit. Sine times cosecant, anything times its reciprocal, is 1. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Now I have the same denominator, and this is probably going to look pretty familiar because we just had almost this exact same question. Now that you have the same denominator, you can combine those fractions together. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. Since sine is sine times sine, one of those sines will cancel with a sine at the bottom. And sine over cosine is tangent. All right, on 8, I'm going to distribute. All right, so I'm going to take cosecant times cosecant. That gives me cosecant squared. I'm going to do cosecant times sine, which, again, I'm going to skip ahead. Of well, let me go ahead and write it out. Okay, cosecant times sine. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Anything times its reciprocal is 1. Again, if you don't see that, remember, cosecant is 1 over sine. So those signs cancel out. Cosecant squared minus 1 is the rearranged form of one of your Pythagorean identities, and it is cotangent squared. All right, on this one, um, I'm going to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. There's no adding here, so there's nothing to factor or foil, so I'm just going to rewrite everything with sines and cosines. Tangent is sine over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Cosine squared is already in terms of sine and cosine, so I'm going to leave it. I'll just write it out twice to make it a little easy to see. All right, sine cancels. One of those cosines cancels. I'm left with cosine. All right, on the next one, um, I'm going to rewrite cosecant in terms of sines and cosines. So cosecant is 1 over sine. Well, now I have two fractions that I can add together, okay? 1 over sine times cosine squared is just cosine squared over sine. It already has that denominator. So this left fraction needs that common denominator. So I have to multiply by sine, top and bottom. That gives me sine squared over sine on the left and cosine squared over sine on the right. I can add those together. And hopefully you see that is one of your Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. 1 over sine is cosecant. And my apple pencil just died. All right, on the next one, again, more than one way to do this. I see a common factor, so I'm going to factor that out. Both terms have a cosine squared. So if I take out cosine squared from the first term, I'm left with tangent squared. If I take out cosine squared from the last term, 
I'm left with 1. Tangent squared plus 1 is one of your Pythagorean identities. It's secant squared. Secant and cosecant are reciprocals. Anything times its reciprocal is 1. Again, if you're not sure, secant is 1 over cosine. Okay, so those cosines cancel, you're left with 1. But again, it's a lot faster if you just recognize something times its reciprocal. 12 is all about those Pythagorean identities. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. Cosecant squared minus 1 is cotan squared. So then from here, we need to kind of rearrange this. All right, so I'm going to rewrite it as cosine squared divided by cotan squared. Okay, I'm going to put cotangent in terms of sines and cosines. So cotangent is cosine over sine. When we divide fractions, we flip our second. Now your cosines will cancel out, and you are left with sine squared. All right, we got another one with division. So this is going to be secant divided by tangent. I'm going to rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine. Secant is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. Keep change and flip. So this is multiply, flip our second. Sines cancel. I get 1 over sine. And 1 over sine is cosecant. All right, 14. Our last one. Um, I'm going to rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine. All right. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Tangent is sine over cosine. We have to get a common denominator. So the right fraction needs to get multiplied by cosine top and bottom. Oop, what am I doing? The right fraction needs to get multiplied by sine top and bottom. The left fraction needs to get multiplied by cosine top and bottom. So the left fraction becomes cosine squared over that denominator. The right fraction becomes sine squared over that denominator. So now I can add them together. Cosine squared plus sine squared is a Pythagorean identity. It is just one. And at this point, there really isn't anything else we can do. Um, if you want, you can rearrange this as cosecant times secant. That'd be fine, but I think something like this, you would probably see that as an answer choice if it was multiple choice. Um, but these two things are the same because 1 over cosine is secant and 1 over sine is cosecant. All right, well, that is all of your review. Um, so again, if you are really familiar with those identities, you can do them pretty quickly. Um, but again, it's all about being familiar, kind of knowing what to look for. The ways I work them out is not the only way to do these problems. There are other ways to get to your answer. So if you did something different, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, and that's why, again, it's really important that you try these on your own. Use this video as kind of a last resort or maybe as a first step or if you get stuck at one place. Um, but if this is all you're doing to review, you're going to struggle a little bit on the quiz unless you try some of these on your own. So don't be afraid to try them. Um, we'll try and go over some of them at the beginning of class if you get stuck. Good luck, guys.